Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our webinar today on should you replace or integrate your spreadsheets. All lines are currently on mute, and if you have any questions, please use the chat box and we'll address them during our Q&A period at the end of the presentation. With that in mind, I'd like to introduce Jennifer, who will begin the presentation. Thank you, Remington. Thank you everybody for joining us today on our session of should you replace or integrate your spreadsheets. There's lots of areas out there, whether that is something internally that you're tracking in a spreadsheet or even working with a customer or vendor where you have spreadsheets that could possibly be integrated. Today, we're gonna to spend some time looking at the surface level of integrating and replacing your spreadsheets, but it's to get you thinking about what do you have in your own organization that you could have in your ERP system and not have outside of the system? Or, as I said, have something like an AP invoice be able to be integrated to save that data entry. So let's go ahead and start this presentation and get into the meat and potatoes. So my name is Jennifer Holman and just a little introduction here about who I am and where I come from. I am certified in both Microsoft and Sage Business Solutions. I originally started as an ERP consultant and where I was able to get right in with the clients, overcome their pains, see what their problems were and come up with the solutions within our products for that customer. Since then, I've moved on now to a pre-sales role where, again, having that experience of being on the ground with the customer, I'm able to showcase the solutions that we have to address some of those issues that I've seen in the past. And sometimes there's some new issues that come across, but it's always interesting to learn something new. And I also take care of the Microsoft implementations as the project manager most specifically focused on the finance and supply chain, so Dynamics 365, where we are taking care of some of those bigger implementations. Our agenda for today is we are going to look at examples of common spreadsheets that we have seen throughout working with multiple customers, um, whether they have already implemented Sage or they've implemented another ERP, but they still have spreadsheets that are living outside of the solution. So we're going to look at some common ones that we've seen there. We're going to look at the integration techniques and we're going to focus on Sage 300 and Microsoft Business Central. Just to give an idea and exposure into those two different ERPs, but how we use their integration techniques. So depending on what ERP you are on, there are always an option for integration. So we're gonna highlight the areas in Sage 300 and Microsoft Business Central. We're gonna highlight edit in Excel, and that's primarily focused on the Microsoft solution. Of course, Microsoft is heavily integrated with its Office 365 products as well. So edit in Excel is a very widely used function. And we're going to show you just at a high level of looking at a customer account, how we would edit in Excel. And then we're gonna take some time to look at our business intelligence reports with Sage 300 and also talk about Microsoft Power BI. Power BI can be used with Sage as well. It is just a connection to the database. But what happens with Power BI is, is part of your office subscription. So if you are already using Office 365 for um, things like Word, Excel, and so on, there is a subscription that also includes Power BI on a monthly rate. And so that's when you can utilize that solution as well. So we've got some areas that we focus on when we are looking at an ERP, but also what a dashboard would look like in Power BI. So let's get started on looking at examples of our common spreadsheets. So common spreadsheets that we come across on a daily basis will be things like an inventory listing where you have identified all of your items and they're living in a spreadsheet. So maybe you are using the financial modules being GL, AR, AP, but you're letting your inventory live outside of the system and you're tracking your inventory just on a spreadsheet also tracking your inventory at a warehouse level to know where it is located in your warehouse is something that we see in an inventory listing. So how can we take that common spreadsheet of an inventory listing 
and change that to be included in our ERP so everything is integrated. We'll look at an example of a bill of material. Again, another area that we see often. If, of course, you're leaving the inventory listing outside of the solution and you build any type of material, you probably have a bill of material that is living outside of the solution as well. Bank reconciliation. If you're not utilizing the bank module within Sage or something like Microsoft Business Central, that is often an area that we see, again, where it is housed outside of the solution and sometimes we see that where there are other banks that aren't included in the ERP so you have not included those as um, part of something that can be in an ERP and it has to live outside in a spreadsheet. We have seen that happen but we've also come up with solutions for that where you're just utilizing the bank module just for those companies alone. We'll look at examples of cash flows as well as financial statements as well, and that will come as an integration as well with things like business intelligence. So let's get started at looking at some of these examples. So an inventory listing, as I mentioned, oftentimes you'll find an inventory listing that lives outside of the ERP. And that is because, again, we're just tracking inventory. Maybe we don't need inventory to be sold to a customer, but we have inventory that's required. Let's say that you're in the service industry and you are going out to a job. You are using maybe the financial modules to bill your customer for a fixed fee on, um, on servicing that equipment. But in the back end, you've got an Excel spreadsheet that lists all of the different inventory items that are required on that service job. So you need to bring screws, you need to bring a hammer, you need to bring a shovel, whatever that may be, those are inventory items that maybe are being held outside of the system. Now that's more a deep dive explanation about inventory listings and maybe why you'd be using it. But again, we see this very often when some, companies have only implemented the financials side of the ERP. So again, the financials being just your GL, your AR, your AP, and a bit of bank. So they're leaving what we call the operational modules out of the equation and not including an inventory list. So this is again just an example of something in a spreadsheet where we've got the inventory name, we've got a description, we've got the unit price, how many do we have in stock, and what's our inventory valuation. We also have a reorder quantity and we have reorder days. All of this information can be tracked within the ERP in the inventory modules. So let's take a look at the next slide here in terms of looking at an ERP. On the left-hand side, we've got an example of what Sage 300 web screen looks like. So some of you who are using Sage 300 today may not be using the web screen. You may be using the client application itself, and it may look a little bit different than the screen that I'm showing here. But the web services is you know, nice and new and fresh, and it is an area that if you aren't already using it, you might see some benefit, especially in a world like today where you're utilizing the web screen. What we see here in this screenshot is giving us an idea of all of the different areas within inventory control that we can set up based on our items. So if we think about that spreadsheet before, we had our inventory items, we had our pricing on that, and we had reorder quantities. And as you can see here in terms of the spreadsheet, or in, sorry, in terms of the screenshot, we've got items, we've got item pricing in the middle, and we've got reorder quantities near the end. We've got other areas in here, manufacturer's item or customer item details, where you have to provide your customer with their item number. And so the inventory control module can support all of those areas, including location details. So something in the previous slide I had mentioned, if you were a service industry, you may be just tracking the material that you need on a job. And so the location details in Sage 300 can track where in your warehouse they are located. On the next screenshot over is the Microsoft Business Central look. And so this screenshot is a little bit different. What Sage 300 has the setup in individual spots. So items get set up in one spot, pricing in another spot and reorder quantities on another area. Within Business Central, it is all in one setup on the ma item master record card. So 
what we've done here is included just an example of what we just saw in a previous screenshot from an Excel version of an inventory listing. It looks very similar when we're looking at Business Central. So already that adaptation to what Excel feels like, how we operate in Excel, we're comfortable in Excel, how it's laid out with rows and columns and we can filter, the exact same screens are available in Business Central. And I will also add that every screen in Business Central, you can export to Excel. So in this screen that I'm seeing here, where we're looking at all of our items, I can just go ahead and say open in Excel, and I'll show you that later in the presentation, but open in Excel and it will open up in Excel and have, again, the table rows and, and all the detail provided there. So quick, quick, easy area in an inventory listing where we can pull that out of being in, say, uh, sorry, in an Excel spreadsheet, and we can implement that right within the ERP to track all of that same information. We're gonna set up a poll now, and we just have a question to find out if any of the um, attendees on the call are using any type of inventory listing at all. And you may not have an inventory listing, you may have, and we'll get into some extra ones, but like examples that we mentioned where the bill of materials and a bank rack. So I just wanted to take a quick poll. So if you can go ahead and fill out that poll question that Remington has listed, that would be great. Okay, I will move on to keep the presentation going. Okay, so it looks like we had about 64% uh, saying no. Okay, very good. But it looks like we've got a good range from what we could track there that is saying yes. So that's great. That's, you know, I hope that you can see and as we keep on going with this uh, presentation, you'll start to see the other areas where you may see some benefit. So for that 30% of you that do have an inventory listing, thinking about ways that you can take that out of an Excel spreadsheet that's independent, that's not in your, you know, being tracked, it doesn't have an inventory valuation where you can run that report for your managers and so on. Those are all areas that, of course, if you put that into an ERP, you will get the reports out of the system to give you that data. So let's move on to the next set of commonly used spreadsheets. So another one here is bill of material. So a bill of material, in this example, we're building a motor and within that motor, we're going to have different components that are available and how many, how much of those components in terms of quantity is going to be required. And it builds out a price. So this is a very simple and basic bill of material. Some bill of materials can be sub-level bill of materials. So first we have to build the motor, then we can go on to the next stage. Let's say we're building a car, for example. We can keep on building based on those bill of materials to ultimately create our master item that we sell to our customer. So this bill of material is an example of a spreadsheet, again, where you're tracking that outside of the system. If we go and look at the ERP in terms of a bill of material, on the left again is Sage 300. So we can see on the very left-hand side, you've got some folder structures. The first folder is your master item, and below that is the tree of components that are applicable to make this bill of material. So when we pull in this information, when we bring in a master item, we'll create that master item, and the components will have already been set up in the database. So having the item record is already in there, the pricing is there, the units of measure and so on are already defined on the item. So when you're pulling in the component, which you can see is highlighted in the middle of the screen to the bottom, the component item numbers, you're just pulling in that data. You've already set it up. So now when it comes, you've already set up those master items. So now when it comes to a bill of material, all you need to do is add your master item and collect what those components are. When we're dealing with a spreadsheet, we are copying and pasting, hoping we don't forget material along the way. Maybe we don't have the fixed cost or the build price correct. Um, there's a lot of risk to keeping a bill of material outside of the solution. 
So again, bill of materials and SAGE 300 live within the inventory module. So if you're not already using inventory module and you see a need for that, and you do any types of materials, then there is the component to allow bill of materials set up within um, SAGE 300. The SAGE 300 bill of material is assembly. So it is not process manufacturing. It is not a manufacturing solution. It is just doing a basic bill of material. So oftentimes we'll see something like furniture is something that we can include as a bill of material um, where yes, it does require assembly. and It may have production along the way, but it may not. So those are areas in bill of materials that we see some differences in. In Microsoft Business Central, it has the same idea. So this one is a little bit different in terms of a, graph, a, a graphic here, but at the in the middle of the screen there, right above the highlight, it says assembly bomb, and then it gives us an item number, and it's an H, HP touchscreen machine that we are building. Below that are the components, okay? And the exact same setup would be the same as what we have for Sage 300, where the component items are already set up in the solution, we are just adding pricing and so on to that. So again, another example to remove an Excel spreadsheet that you're currently using outside of the solution and bringing that into your ERP. The next one is a bank reconciliation. So again, this is an example of a bank reconciliation where we've got this outside of the system. We've got our opening and closing dates. We've got our opening balances. We've got our deposits and our withdrawals and a closing balance. So instead of doing this through a spreadsheet where again, you've got that human interaction, things could get missed. Of course, we, need, we still need to balance, but it's a lot easier to manipulate the balance in an Excel spreadsheet than it would be in the solution. So let's take a look at the solution. Stage 300 again on the left. So with this, we would have our bank, in the middle of the screen lists all the transactions that came through Sage 300. So all of your AP and AR transactions are listed here as either withdrawals or deposits. You would clear the ones that are on your bank statement. And then close to the bottom of that screen image, there's a button called bank entry. So any entries from your bank, whether those are loans, um, insurance, things that would not necessarily have run through Sage 300, they are a direct deposit um, or a direct withdrawal from your bank, those you would calculate as a bank entry. And when you do that as a bank entry, it will update the general ledger as well. So you're not having to complete uh, bank reconciliation outside of the solution and then go into something like Sage 300 and go to the GL and create a GL entry for that, update your bank accounts and so on, you can take care of that all through the bank reconciliation. Again, that spreadsheet doesn't have all of the transactions that ran through your ERP. So being your payments and your receipts from your, from your customers. So you're having to track that all manually. Instead, let the solution do it for you. You've already done 90% of the work in terms of doing those withdrawals and deposits, those checks and those receipts. So take advantage of the bank reconciliation in the ERP. Uh, once you do one, it is very, you know, it's one of those things that we do on a monthly basis, but it's a lot cleaner than keeping it outside of the solution. And of course, keep everything balanced. If this does not balance, you can't just fudge this like you could when it comes to an Excel spreadsheet. On the right-hand side is Microsoft Business Central. So on the right-hand side of the screenshot close to the bottom there, we've got the bank account ledger entries. And that's again, all of your withdrawals and your deposits that come out of the system. So they will again, all be listed there. And there's a checkbox next to them that you would select to clear those if they are part of your statement for that year or for that month, I apologize. On the left-hand side, we've got the bank statement lines and that's where we enter our entries. So within both of these solutions, they both handle a bank reconciliation. They both achieve the exact same thing. They just look different. But the idea here is that most ERPs have a bank reconciliation. So let's remove that out of an Excel spreadsheet. Let's get that into the ERP and let the ERP do 
the majority of your work versus having to have a resource take care of that on a weekly or monthly basis. Financial statements are oftentimes that we see them outside of the solution. So you've exported your data to um, Excel and whether that's coming from multiple solutions, uh, multiple, you know, whether you've got a sister company and they're using a different ERP. So now you bring out all of that data and you've got an Excel spreadsheet that takes care of your financial statements. So the drawback to that is that that data is not necessarily up to date. If you ran that and collected those financial statements and you only run that on a monthly basis, that data is only as fresh as the last time you ran it and collected that data. If you integrate using something like Sage Business Intelligence, or Sage also has Financial Reporter, but Business Intelligence is a lot um, cleaner and fresher and we can do more with Business Intelligence, where I gave that example of a sister company. Using Business Intelligence, you can grab all of your data from Sage 300, it already has that connector, but then you can also set up a connector to another outside database and have it read into your financial statement. So all the time, that is real-time data. Anytime you run these financial statements, even if it's coming from your sister company, it's real-time data because you're executing those connectors at that time. So what we've done is given some screenshots here of just some common financial statements that get replaced from outside the solution and get replaced within business intelligence. So we've got an example of a balance sheet. A balance sheet you can keep very clean. In this example, we've shown you that you can, you can draw out your columns to be by the quarter if you want, or by the month, or by you know semi-monthly, whatever you would like in terms of those columns, we define those with you. And you can grab all of that information, again, from Stage 300 or any of your outside solutions. The income statement we've done as well. Again, on the top right corner, that's our income statement and it's over two years and includes a variance column as well. And then we've also taken a next step in terms of the income statement and we've done that by division. So when you're using segments or dimensions in Microsoft, those are where you can pull your income statement even further to get it by division, by region, by whichever segment you have there. You can also run your financial statements to get to that level. So again, these are just examples of the business intelligence side of financial statements. Um, let's look at what the financial statements from Microsoft would look like. So Microsoft calls these account schedules. Um, and based on that, in terms of the account schedules, you can define your columns. Out of the box, they have kept it very clean. So these are examples of if I were just to say, run my report from my income statements out of the box without going to Excel first, these are what those financial statements would look like. Again, we've got our income statement. We've got our income statement, and then I've highlighted we're doing this by a dimension. So this is our customer group being known as our medium customer group. So we've drilled that down even further. An example of a cash flow statement. I left out balance sheet because it was very similar to the income statement. But what it does have out of the box is a cash flow statement, which is lovely. Not all solutions have a cash flow statement um, or any indicator on cash flow. It is something that becomes so Business Central does have that out of the box in terms of the cash flow statement. And then the very last image there is showing that all of these reports can also be Excel reports. So the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flow, retained earnings, trial balance, and it also includes the aged accounts payable and aged accounts receivable. On the Sage side, unfortunately, it's not always easy to take your aged accounts payable or receivable report and try to export that to Excel and try to manipulate that and get some data and, and create a pivot table because it's got rows and columns and headings and so on. Um, so this is nice and clean when it comes out. It has tables um, and it looks exactly how you see here on screen when we printed it to PDF. It will look like that in the Excel as well, but it's doesn't have merged fields and so on. So it's a nice clean way to export those financial statements. 
um, or accounts receivable statements as well. Okay, so common imports that we see. So leaving the world now of what are, what are common Excel spreadsheets that I'm holding outside of the solution. So those common Excel spreadsheets, again, going back are the inventory listing, a bill of material, a bank reconciliation, though financial statements, those are all examples of areas that are common areas that we see outside of the solution. We've certainly not covered them all. We're just trying to give the audience some exposure to what do you have outside of the solution that maybe could be part within your ERP for whatever ERP you're currently working on? What can we take that's outside, that's independent, that isn't reading real-time data and have that part of our ERP and let the ERP do 90 to 100% of the work for us? So back to common imports. We often see a payroll import. You're using an outside payroll solution, whether that is a paid service, let's say through ADP or Ceridian. We also see where you might be using something like Sage 50 as your payroll solution, but you're using Sage 300 as your um, ERP because you have not implemented the payroll module within the ERP. So areas where you may need to integrate payroll, which ultimately is a GL import, but that is an area that we see very often come up, especially if you're using an outside source like ADP, as an example. Accounts payable invoices. If any of your vendors are sending you invoices, surely they can send it to you, I'm sure in this, in this day, as an Excel spreadsheet. If they can provide it to you in Excel or CSV, we'll get into that with the Sage imports, but if they can provide that in a CSV or an Excel file or um, you know, an XML file, you just need to import that. You don't need somebody who is going to rekey that information and have that user interference. You can just file import. There are tools out there that are automated importing tools. So if it sees that you've dropped a file into a certain directory, it will automatically import it. Again, saving you just those extra steps, just those extra steps for a resource where that resource can be utilized in other areas other than data entry. Accountants entries are often areas that at the end of a year, you're getting a lot of entries from your accountant that you now need to go and do those entries manually and hope that you don't mess up one of those entries and need to now create a reversal entry on yourself. Accountants entries, much like accounts payable invoices, I'm sure your accountants can provide you those entries in an Excel form. Oftentimes we have to give them a template, somebody like an accountant, we might give them a template to populate for us. Um, but either way, those are areas that we see as common imports. And then we've also included a sales order as an example. You might also have a purchase order. Same process would apply, whether it's a sales order or a purchase order. A sales order you're receiving from customers, so you want that to be automated. Maybe you're using another tool. Uh, maybe you're using a web store that you don't currently have integrated. You can import that through a sales order. Same thing when it comes to a purchase order. If you needed to integrate a purchase order that you've received from your vendor, we can do the same thing using just our out of the box tools. So I'm not going to show you any third party ways that we can do these. These ones are just going to be out of the box and utilizing the tools you may already have. So being that those are four different examples, four to five if you include purchase orders, being that those are the examples, the next screen is just an indication of how we would do that out of the box. So Sage 300, every screen, more or less, if it's a setup screen, if it's the option screen, for example, in setup, you can't file import. You have to hit the check boxes. But if it's something like importing items, or in this example of a screenshot, importing our purchase order, we just go file, we hit import. A screen for import up appears for us. We can browse to the particular file that we're looking for. But here's a screenshot of all of the different types of files that Sage 300 can support through the out-of-the-box import. So Excel and CSV are the most common. 
XML we see now more commonly when we're dealing with other solutions um, or if you're dealing with anything around EDI, for example, sometimes we get those files through an XML. Also an ODBC, which is a database connection. So if we're trying to grab from another database and import that, we can also do that. These areas would need attention and we would work with you to develop these um, imports because something like a purchase order invoice, for example, has tons of fields, whether that is on the header, whether that's on the details, being the lines, but we would work through with you to create a standard template that you would need based on the type of import you're trying to do. So whether that's a payroll import, we would work to make sure only the required fields that, as an example, ADP requires, we would work with you on that. Same thing when it would come to um, a sales order import or a purchase order import, trimming down those fields so that it, can only, it will only import the relevant data and that it's not these big, large files that you're working with. So there is some area there that, of course, we, we would want to offer support. Um, but out of the box, the beautiful thing is that you're not buying another tool for this. This is something you already own and can use. So if you think again about what tools you have, um, we can think about, you know, can I import, can I take away some of that duplicate entry that I've got for those imports just by using these out-of-the-box tools. The Business Central side loves Excel. So it can handle any type of file, whether that's XML, ODBC, an API integration, it can handle all of that. But we need to take it to the next step, which is called web services to get us there. If we can live within, which is web services is included with Business Central, but it is a little bit more of a developer side of the solution. If we live within the box and we can live within Excel, we can use Microsoft Business Central's configuration packages. So I've given an example here where there's three different options, but let's talk about two of them being an AP invoice and a GL entry we create all of the imports in the same type of screen. So it doesn't have the file import like we saw with Sage 300. It has a different screen called configuration packages where all of the types of imports that we use will be listed there. Again, with security, you would limit only those who can import to see the screen and maybe even trim it back even further to only their files they can import. The code or the package name, we would wanna be specific. If you are doing, let's say, AP invoices and you have two different vendors that they're coming from and the templates are slightly different based on information we get from them, you would have two different package names. When we get into the actual package, which is the middle image here, we're looking at the GL entry, it gives us an indication in terms of the number of fields. So that's the third field from the right. And it also gives us an indication of how many fields we've included. So when we select something like GL entry, it will give us all of the available fields, but then we can go ahead and trim back and only have certain fields that we need available. And then we get a screen that looks like the third image here in Excel. And so this is how, instead of needing to necessarily work with somebody in support, like we may have to on Sage 300, on Business Central, the end user has a lot more flexibility. Sometimes they still need some support because sometimes it'll bark at you to say you don't have access to this required field or this was a required field but it is a you know it does give the end user a lot more access to how that file will look and it's a nice clean file so we're going to go ahead and ask another poll question here so remington if you want to pull up another poll question for the group so we want to know from you if you are doing any imports manually so taking, and by that, what we mean is from the ones that we've given examples from, or thinking about your own business, are there areas that you can remove that from being something that is double entry? So now somebody takes that spreadsheet and now they have to rekey in that information or like an AP invoice and they have to rekey in that information. Are there any of you out there that can think of areas where you can take a file that you currently have and now change that into an import to make things easier. 
and we'll give you a minute to respond. Okay, very good. Let's see where we're at. So we have about 70% of people saying yes. Perfect. Okay, very good. So again, this is a very light exposure to what you can do and the types of files that you can take out, but we wanted to get you thinking and we wanted, you know, where are those areas that you can remove from all of that extra duplicate work that um and again leaning on lean on your vendors you're paying them so get them to provide you something that again is going to make your life a little bit easier and that's just an example of of something like that payroll might be another one as well instead of rekeying any entries getting a file from um from that vendor okay very good so we move now into edit in excel is our next topic and i had mentioned at the beginning that that Microsoft Business Central is the one that really utilizes this very well. In Sage 300, we, we don't have the option to edit in Excel the same way. With Business Central, we do. So what we've done here is we've given you a screenshot of where we are and what we're trying to change. So the top screenshot is just a very quick look at the customer, at a list of all of the customers. And the top ribbon, we're able to say either open in Excel or edit in Excel. So talking about open in Excel for just a moment, that was the example that I had mentioned that if you ever, when we were looking at the items, the inventory listing, if we ever wanted to just export that to Excel to get a listing, that's what we would do. Open in it, we would just select open in Excel and it would drop that to Excel and we can see. Edit in Excel is when we want to change something. So an example of that might be an address that we want to change. So what we'd select is we would choose edit in Excel. And then once we're in Excel, it connects to our database. So on the right hand side of Excel there, you'll see Microsoft Dynamics Office and it says data connector. So it will connect to that environment. We will update, let's say the address, and then we would go ahead and hit publish. And that's in the bottom right corner there. And that's all we have to do to update that information. So something like, even when it comes to, if you can all remember, years ago when taxes changed and the tax changed for the GST from 7% to 5%, and we all changed to HST a while back as well, and so on and so forth. And that was very painful to be able to, you know, we had to export and import and update this and update that and different screens and click here and click there this would eliminate that. You could edit in Excel, change the, the information about taxes and publish it back and it's already updated. There's no file import, there's, um, there's no delay there, it's quick and it's easy. And again, this is just an example of the customer screen. We see edit in Excel in a variety of screens, but it's always a nice easy topic to, to mention something like customers so that you can see where this would go in terms of edit in Excel and giving an example of something like changing their address because they have moved. Okay, you may have a variety of customers that have, um, you know, changed even their contacts that are involved. To the right in column M in that screenshot, you can see contact names as well. So being able to update those contacts right within Excel versus having to go into the customer card, go to the contacts button, find the contact and then change that. So this is nice and clean um, in terms of edit in Excel and then just publish back. Our next topics are on business intelligence and Power BI as we wrap up here. So business intelligence, we wanted to give you some screen graphics here of different areas in Sage Intelligence that we can leverage business intelligence. So we already saw that we can use business intelligence for financial statements. So now moving into something a little bit, um, you know, lighter and not so number oriented, we can look at something like a sales dashboard or a financial trend analysis, where we're seeing graphics in terms of charts of data versus just seeing numbers. And so we've given examples, and these examples of the sales dashboard, that's out of the box. 
The financial trend analysis is out of the box. The accounts payable by transaction, it's out of the box. So if you're using Sage 300 and you have access to business intelligence, all of you have access to business intelligence who are on Sage 300, you may just have the, the included version where you don't have all the different connectors. So if you're trying to connect to different databases, you would need to take it a step further. Um, you may also need to buy additional report manager or report viewer licenses to share this information with those in the organization. But the, the important thing here is that, as I mentioned, it's already included. You already have this. It just might need, you know, you might change some of the graphicals around. You might want to include extra. But the most important part is that the data set is already there. So when we're pulling the data out, if we use the example of accounts payable by transaction, this is by all the vendor accounts. Well, you may want to have it not by vendor accounts. You may want to have it by vendor group as an example. So you can change some of those things around. The data is all provided there for us. This is just the dashboard screen. You'll see a different sheet that holds all of the data. That's business intelligence for Sage. And this is an example of Microsoft Power BI. So I mentioned that Power BI is something that you can get with your Office 365 subscription. The data that we are pulling here is based on Microsoft data. On the left-hand side are screens that if we logged into powerbi.com, we would see this as a visual in our Power BI as the dashboard, but these can also be embedded on the dashboard screen when we log into Business Central or something like Finance and Supply Chain Management. That's the next solution up for the Dynamics 365 line. So the left-hand side there are images that live both in Power BI and are also pinned to our dashboard in the ERP. So again, going back to everything in the ERP and I can see everything and I'm exposed to everything in the ERP, these images live and are pinned to the ERP. You don't have to pin every image or every visual if you don't want. You can just pin the ones that you want to see on your ERP dashboard and then live within Power BI to create others or have different components, whatever you'd like. Um, but the nice thing is that they can all be pinned to your ERP. We've given examples too of KPIs, so cost of goods sold. That's just a very quick number of $40 million in cost of goods sold, as an example. If you were to click on that, it would drill you in further to give you that data. So this is just giving, again, that information that comes out of your ERP and is connected to Power BI to give us this information. Once your database especially on the Microsoft side, has been connected to Power BI. There are multiple out-of-the-box um, reports that are already available, but it is also very end-user friendly to work in Power BI as the end user. So if you needed to create any new reports and still collect the data from your ERP, it is very easy for the end user to do that. It does require a little bit of a training session, but there's also a wealth of content out there in terms of Power BI on YouTube and so on that can certainly get all users through the initial stages of Power BI. So I encourage those, all of you that are on this call today to take a moment to look at Power BI because again, it can be used for your um, Sage database or any other database that you may be working with as well. It just connects through a database platform. And again, Power BI is just part of your Office 365 subscription. So for those who may not already be on Office 365, again, we would gently nudge and encourage that direction. You will see benefit overnight of having Office 365 versus having it installed locally, individually on each person's PC. When we have that through the cloud, we can share and collaborate that much easier. So something like Power BI, we can share that right to our users 
um, because they're part of our Office 365 group. So areas to consider if you haven't already done Office 365 that we would strongly encourage um, looking at that. And then again, if you haven't seen Power BI, take a moment, spend five minutes, go on YouTube, see what Power BI can do. And I think that you will all be impressed with what you can get out of that if we don't leverage um, business intelligence this age. So I'm ending off with a quote that basically tells us that any advancement in technology is equivalent to magic. And I love this quote because it, if we were to just take something that lives out of the system, put technology against it, just put it in your ERP, let your ERP be your technology, you will say the words, it's like magic. I've said that over and over and over through implementations, um, while we've built things, making our lives easier, leaning on the technology so that we can see the magic happen take out that redundant work that is not necessary and let that technology that again you're already paying for lean on that lean on your vendors um, and you know make your day-to-day -day just that much easier we'd like to finish off with any questions so it doesn't look like we have any questions yet but we'll just give everyone uh minute or two just to enter them if they have any that come to mind perfect don't be shy Um, so I do have a question here. Uh, how can I learn more about BI and using these tools? That's a great question. So what I would suggest is to reach out to your account manager and they will set you up in terms of that direction, depending on what platform you're currently on. They'll set you up with the right direction there. What we will do is also hold other more in-depth sessions, um, those are to come around business intelligence and as well around Power BI. So you'll start to see some educational content come out. But if you'd like to get access to that right away, I would recommend reaching out to your account manager at Bath. If you don't have um, or if you don't know who your account manager is, then let us know, send us a chat and between the group here, we can get you set up with um, and in line with your account manager. Another question that I just received is, can you tell people how to get Power BI into Excel? Power BI into Excel. Um, so once you're in Power BI, when you look and expand to see the data, there is an option there that uh, says the same thing of open in Excel. So I don't have an image of that right now, but it is an option that once you open up that visual and you take it a step further to look at the content with the data that's bringing in that, you can select open that in Excel. Um, so that does look like that's all the questions that we have uh, for today. So I'd just like to thank everyone again for taking time out of their busy days to attend, as well as Jennifer for presenting today. Everyone who's registered will be receiving a recording of the webinar via email, and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their days. Thank you.